Well, <coughs> hello everybody and thank you very much for uh, accepting my talk. Um, I've been doing this work on life energy for uh, quite a few years and now have uh, a number of articles uh, published, but um, uh, I guess a few of you will know about this journal, uh, which is uh, only an online journal and it's only been set up fairly recently. It's called the Journal of Syntropy. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I want to uh, move on as, uh, as fast as possible to um, get to the real nub of the talk, which is about uh, uh, global meditations, how to enhance global meditations. But so I'll just include the experimental results which are directly relevant uh, to that. So I started with, <laughs> uh, with my interest started with uh, an interest in organite, which is um, uh, just metal particles set in a, <clears throat> in a dielectric matrix, and it's similar to the walls of um, uh, Wilhelm Reich's organ accumulator, metal and organic. Uh, in this case, the uh, organite um, uh, does not serve as a, uh, a source in itself, but it, it kind of amplifies uh, any other source around it. So it will amplify, in this case, uh, the energy from the sun. But in this case, uh, this one also uh, has a geometric aspect um, and it's uh, modeled on the um, <clears throat> enormous uh, pyramids built in Russia recently, <clears throat> uh, which, uh, uh, like the Egyptian ones, are also based on the golden section. Uh, I also have one uh, <laughs> based only on geometry. <clears throat> now, this is uh, how I developed a quantitative method of dowsing. And um, uh, <clears throat> so what I find is uh, I'm using dowsing rods and walking uh, towards the, the source, I find a series of rings where the rods uh, come together and between the rings they open up again. And then finally there's a uh, there's a gap uh, before you get to the source where they come together again. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, at a suggestion from uh, Jim Lyons, a colleague of mine, he said, why don't you measure this gap? And it might relate to the energy of the source. So um, what I did was um, charge uh, some water just by putting it close to the organite, <clears throat> and uh, then measured out volumes of uh, water. And uh, I measured this gap in inches, uh, with, in, and uh, amazingly enough, found a linear relation. I've done this a couple of times. Now, uh, this is a very important uh, aspect uh, in relation to the global meditation. Um, <clears throat> it seems that uh, dowsable energy can be sent non-locally by means of quantum entanglement between two identical images on paper, one near the source and the other at a dis distant uh, location. Um, and I've done quite a lot of uh, of this uh, using different kinds of images. <coughs> um, uh, of course, two pieces of white paper don't work at all. And um, <coughs> what uh, works best is an image uh, which is both complex and unique. So uh, that's the one I've been using quite a lot, um, which I've generated myself. It's pretty unique. But even this one here um, uh, is, uh, doesn't look so unique and not so complex. 
And what that is, actually, is um, the logo of a man called uh, Carl Veltz, uh, somewhere in the United States. And he uh, employs organite in his uh, radionic instrument, and he keeps his, his logo close to the organite and invites people to download it from the net and uh, douse it or whatever. So I did this, <clears throat> and uh, certainly I could pick up the energy um, across the Atlantic. Well, uh, so I thought to do this experiment, which I rather like. Um, the um, organite, of course, receiving energy from the sun, um, it comes up to a maximum about midday. But Carl Welt's logo reaches its maximum later in the afternoon, presumably when the sun is high over uh, eastern United States. Well, um, th that's all dowsing, so um, nobody believes dowsing. Scientists won't accept dowsing, of course. So what objective uh, measures um, can I use to back it up? Well, the one uh, I'd really like to do more of, but I can't afford it and the university won't let me do it anymore, but I do have some results, with uh, water uh, charged by being close to the uh, organite, for example. And um, <clears throat> uh, so I got these few results. This is the um, uh, absorption spectrum of uh, uh, a number of samples of water. Um, it's difference from control. So the control uncharged water would be just zero all the way along the bottom. And here you have um, the dark blue line is uh, water being close to organite. All the others are non charged non-locally um, with one uh, image, one copy of the image uh, close to the organite and the other close to water at some, uh, I think, 30 meters distance. So um, I wish I could do more of that, but um, I can't afford it at the moment. Um, this is the other uh, objective measure, much more difficult and, and time consuming, is growth of seedlings. So uh, in this case, I'm using as a source this uh, non-inductive coil pulsed with 10 kilohertz. It's just sort of any old frequency. And uh, it's surrounded by one copy of the image. The other copy of the image at a distant location so is in an incubator um, where uh, the seedlings are growing. So I've... Um, uh, what, being able to take out these seedlings which are on plastic grids and weigh them at, at intervals and put them back. Um, here's some results. <coughs> um, got a bit out of line. Anyway, so this is the weight added to the, uh, to the grids and the seedlings at day two. And uh, uh, the um, test here uh, which I've called remote scalar field, and uh, as against the control. And the difference is uh, three grams, highly significant. Um, but it takes, uh, these are eight experiments, each of about three days, so it takes uh, a lot of time. Um, well, now I have to um, introduce uh, the, the um, uh, the subject of Ormus. Uh, surprisingly, not very many people know very much about it, but um, uh, I'll just quickly introduce it. Ormus is a sort of general name given to what's often called white gold. And uh, these atoms have extraordinary um, uh, properties. Um, I'm not going to go through them, but I especially want to point to uh, the affinity for uh, um, alkali metals. Um, and this gives rise to the um, favored method, a simple method to concentrate almost 
from seawater. You just add caustic soda and you get this white precipitate, mainly magnesium hydroxide. That comes down and there you have your concentrated ormus, which my wife and I uh, take uh, by mouth from time to time and I put it on my garden with very good results. Um, well, here I made a rather serendipitous mistake. I wanted for some reason to uh, uh, dissolve this precipitate. So my hand went up to uh, hopefully hydrochloric acid. Oh, it was a little bottle of phosphoric acid that a friend had sent me. I don't know why, but <clears throat> anyway, I thought, oh well, let's use phosphoric acid. <laughs> So what happened was the, uh, the uh, white precipitate dissolved initially and then very soon, in a few seconds, came down again as a much heavier crystalline precipitate, presumably um, magnesium phosphate. Well, uh, I was dowsing these and um, um, concurrently with this uh, crystalline precipitate coming down, there was a huge in increase in dowsable energy. So I thought that was interesting. And uh, uh, yes, that, that well, that described what happened. So I, I then bought some magnesium phosphate and added it to a solution of dead sea salt. And uh, um, right enough, in a few, few minutes, the dowsable energy went up enormously. And uh, why should this be uh, when uh, Dead Sea Salt, even the crystalline Dead Sea Salt, has almost no dowsable energy? Um, I think, uh, I can only think of this as somehow on going into the uh, magnesium phosphate crystals, the almost atoms align themselves into a uh, Bose-Einstein con conjugate. I, I couldn't go, go into the physics of that. <laughs> I'm not a physicist, but um, it's something like that. Um, well, a really important thought uh, that followed this was the question whether, when this, uh, the almost atoms are coming together like that, whether they might become imprinted with information. So I chose uh, some sort of um, uh, information that could be measured, uh, uh, which was uh, frequency information. And um, here's the experiment. Um, I had in this case uh, the frequencies uh, provided from the frequency generator to two metal plates and uh, between the metal plates is a flat piece of organite to supply the life energy. And uh, there's the image around them. And at the distant location, you have the receiving set up uh, with the image and um, a flask of Dead Sea Salt solution. And I've just tipped some uh, uh, magnesium phosphate into this. Uh, in this case, the uh, five frequencies are being cycled through rather quickly, so to make, <laughs> make sure that the, uh, the system is picking up every one of them. Um, now, uh, how, how can I measure the frequency? Well, you can't measure it directly. Um, I made use of Dr. Cyril Smith, who has developed extremely um, uh, sensitive and uh, uh, con quantitative uh, method of dowsing frequencies. So he just um, uh, puts the sample between, uh, um, no, he has his pendulum between the sample and a signal generator and a coil. So, uh, he, and he did this blind. I sent these samples off to him. Uh, and this is just one sample, by the way. I sent these off to him and he doused them blind and you can see there was a remarkable uh, correlation. Well, uh, that's frequencies. So 
Can you store any kind of information, including perhaps healing or meditation in this way? Of course, healing and meditation can't be measured, but um, um, I thought, well, let's uh, see if we can store the information contained in this image. So here's the uh, Dead Sea Salt solution with uh, magnesium phosphate uh, poured into it. And then uh, I uh, filtered out the, the uh, uh, magnesium phosphate and, um, uh, and dried it and put it near a source of uh, life energy. Um, and then I doused this image on paper at a distant location uh, to see whether the life energy here uh, was being sent non-locally um, uh, by means of the, um, of the image being stored in this little tube. And it did work very, very well. Um, so, in the sa same way, um, with a person in place of the image, uh, the energy of the image can be doused over his, uh, his photograph. So I've, I've, I've uh, stored my wife, <laughs> my wife's person on almost magnesium phosphate. And then um, uh, when I can douse actually her life energy, but uh, in this case, uh, the almost magnesium phosphate containing her information is placed near the organite and I can douse uh, the uh, energy of the organite over the photograph of my wife very well. Uh, this uh, can also, of course, uh, be used in principle for remote healing. Um, so the healer would focus on the healy or a photograph of the healy um, and add the magnesium phosphate to the Dead Sea Salt solution. And then later you can use, um, this is organite, uh, with the, uh, the imprinted uh, almost magnesium phosphate I inside it um, uh, in the form of radionic transmission. I've tried this a couple of times, but I, I can't report <laughs> very obvious results. So <clears throat> now I come to suggestions for the enhancement of global meditation. Um, well, uh, of course, um, this is, uh, I just go to the bottom, uh, our capitalist industrial civilization is going down the tubes at a rate of not. So I think this is very urgent uh, for something to be done. Uh, you would all know these uh, results of the Maharishi uh, Institute um, years ago. Uh, I think uh, that we can't argue with these results. So what I'm suggesting in the first place is a very simple um, situation, uh, just that the individual meditator um, uh, or group meditations would just have some sort of image of the world, either a map or the photograph from space. And um, uh, this meditation might be sent to the whole world, non-locally. Um, and of course, the uh, meditators themselves provide life energy, which is essential. It's essential to have some life energy for this to occur. That's why some people, some physicists trying to do it uh, haven't been very successful without life energy. Um, <coughs> um, and here's a situation where the Russian pyramids presumably are, seem to be improving the local environment. This is a very powerful source I've uh, developed recently, but we won't go into the uh, 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 complications of that, but it could uh, perhaps without human meditation send life energy to the world. 
this is the final one where uh, you would, in this case, have um, uh, a tube containing uh, almost magnesium phosphate, which had previously been imprinted um, by a, during a group meditation or ritual, hopefully storing uh, the effects of the, uh, the group meditation. And um, well, that's my s suggestion. Uh, I don't think we'll go into that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Could you uh, briefly uh, describe how the Russian pyramids affected the local area in what way? Well, um, of course, it can't be measured uh, exactly, but um, uh, they, uh, they think, they've, they've built, I don't know, 12 or 15 of these pyramids. And uh, in the locality of two of them out in the country, uh, one, uh, they say, uh, two wildflowers which had disappeared, have reappeared. And uh, in another one near a lake, uh, the storks which had gone have come back to nest. <laughs> I was troubled by some aspects of your presentation that uh, seem to be getting things backwards um, for example, you seem to be talking about increasing the pH of a solution by adding an acid to it, and the the time difference between the um, the, the the local source and the remote source driven by the Orgon.org logo. Uh, you were attributing a later solar cycle to a location to that, as far as I understood, was to the east of you. I uh, wonder if if you could clarify this a bit. I didn't quite get, uh, uh, my hearing's not very good. Uh, can you just encapsulate it in my... Uh, okay, yeah. point one. Yeah. You spoke of increasing the pH of a solution and then a few moments later spoke of reaching for an acid to add to it to do that. No, Acids no. lower pH. Uh, oh, no, no, the increasing pH is, is only to precipitate the uh, uh, um, magnesium hydroxide, which carries down the uh, almost with it. Um, the, the later adding acid was just a, um, a serendipitous mistake. Um, you know, the, the, most of the uh, work uh, which I've talked about is uh, done with uh, just magnesium phosphate that I bought from a chemical company uh, and Dead Sea Salt solution. There's no question of, of, of pH at all. Nothing to do with pH, no. I'm just adding mag magnesium phosphate to Dead Sea Salt solution. <laughs>